Welcome back everyone to my channel Chemistry Made Simple for Need. I am Dr. Lakshmi Subramanian with a PhD in Chemistry. Today we are going to continue with Surface Chemistry Unit 5 Class 12. One important point for revision keys I have got to mention here is that keys are concepts curated in simplest forms and they are considered as high yield points which can help you in scoring well. Concepts are put down in simple language. Revisiting keys multiple times gives you a better idea of the concept and also improves your recollection capacity. Now let us move on to our today's video. So first of all we will start with this diagram which shows the hydrophilic and hydrophobic ends. So you can see here the ones marked in green they are called hydrophilic head. So already we have mentioned about hydrophilic and hydrophobic. So what is hydrophilic? Hydrophilic means water loving. So these are the COO part which remains outside on the surface all over here. Now this is the hydrophobic tail. Hydrophobic means water repelling tail which always points towards the center of the sphere. Now we will see the explanation which is given here. We have already learned about the cleansing action of so but uh, just we will do a quick recap on this. Already uh, we had uh, studied that uh, Michel consists of both hydrophobic uh, hydrocarbon like center core and uh, soap's cleansing action mainly is due to the fact that the soap molecules have the ability to form a Michel around oil droplets such that the hydrophobic part of the stearite ions which is present in the oil droplet and hydrophilic part which projects out of the grease droplets just like you know in uh, toothbrushes and all we have got bristles. So it is just like that and you always uh, you know that the polar groups which will interact with water and the oil droplets surrounded by the stearite ion what happens to them they are pulled into the water and they are totally removed from the dirty surface. So soap plays an important role in emulsification and washing away of all these oils and fats and at the same time the negatively charged sheath around the globules that is the one which stops them from coming together to form aggregates. So I think you understood this concept that is the cleansing option, action of soaps clearly. Now next is how do we prepare colloids. So we have got different methods for preparing colloids. First of all we will see the chemical methods. So mostly in the colloidal dispersion they are formed by chemical reaction as a result the formation of uh, molecules by double decomposition or oxidation reduction or hydrolysis can take place. This molecule then aggregates and finally forms salts. So you can see one equation given here which is FeCl3 plus 3H2O that is hydrolysis. They undergo hydrolysis and form FeOH thrice which is the salt over here and 3HCl. Now there is this is another important method Bredig's arc method. You can see that is uh, shown in the diagram here. What is this process about? It is involving both dispersion and condensation. They are both acting here, working here together. So you can see that gold, silver, platinum, the, these are all uh, colloidal souls of metals, mainly gold, silver. So these can be prepared by Bredig's Arx method. So that is we prepare the colloidal souls of gold, silver, platinum by the method of Bredig's Arx. What happens in this method? Normally an electric arc is struck between electrodes of the metal it which is immersed in the dispersion medium. You can see that this is the dispersion medium and we are having plus positive electrode and negative electrode both of which are immersed in the dispersion medium. So what happens when the electric arc is struck? So immediately a high amount of heat which is generated that will vaporize the metal and then it condenses to form the colloidal size and this whole thing is kept immersed in the ice bath. Now next is peptization. So you can define peptization that is a process to convert the precipitate into colloidal salt. How do we do it? 
by shaking it in the presence of small amount of electrolyte. So when you shake it in the presence of electrolyte, you can convert a precipitate into colloidal soul. And uh, the electrolyte which you use for this purpose, we call it a peptizing agent. So normally this method is used to convert a freshly prepared precipitate to a colloidal soul. Now what happens during peptization? The precipitate can adsorb one of the ions which is in the electrolyte onto its surface. So as a result of this, what happens? Positive or negative charge will develop on precipitates and finally it is broken down into smaller particles. So we want the colloidal particles. So by breaking this down, we get the colloidal particles which are of smaller sizes. Now, I hope you understood about that concept as well. Now, we will move on to purification. How we purify colloidal solutions? So, whenever we prepare colloidal solutions, they have a little more amount of electrolytes and some other soluble impurities. So, you have to remove it. How do you do it? So, the presence of these electrolyte traces, little bit is needed for the stability of the colloidal solution. And larger quantities, if it is present, that will cause the coagulation. So for avoiding that coagulation we have to reduce the concentration of in the soluble impurities to a minimum amount which is uh, the required amount. So we use the process to reduce the amount of impurities to a requisite minimum which is known as the purification of colloidal solution. Now dialysis this is a word which everyone might know that is an important uh, functioning with uh, important process even uh, for human beings and all that we use the dialysis method for kidney for people uh, those uh, who have you who are having problem with kidneys so the purification of blood blood through kidneys is done by dialysis so what is actually dialysis that is a process of removing the dissolved substance from a colloidal solution by making them diffuse through a suitable membrane. So these particles which are ions or smaller molecules that these particles are normally present in a true solution. So, but they can pass through animal membrane like bladder and all that or parchment paper, cellophane sheet but not the colloidal particles. So the membrane can be used for dialysis. So the apparatus which we use for this purpose is called a dialyzer. So what happens here is that we keep a bag of suitable membrane with the colloidal solution suspended and uh, we are continuously passing fresh water through this. So what happens is that the molecules and ions will diffuse through the membrane into the outer water and then uh, only leaving only the pure colloidal solution inside. So this is one important process and uh, next one is electrodialysis. So we already learned what is dialysis. Now what is electrodialysis? So the dialysis process, you know, it's very time consuming. It's too slow. So we can make it faster by just doing one thing. You apply an electric field of the dissolved substance in impure colloidal solution. Uh, with, uh, and uh, what happens is that this process now is called electrodialysis. So the colloidal solution, uh, like before we saw, it is placed in a bag of suitable membrane. And at the same time, pure water is taken outside and, uh, and we are fitting electrons see anode and cathode which is fitted onto the compartment and the ions present in the colloidal solution they migrate towards oppositely charged electrons. So if this is anode the negatively charged colloids will go over here and since this is the cathode the positively charged particles will go here. So uh, here inside we have the salt particle and the, uh, this is the crystalloid and this is this this is the dialyzing membrane and this is water plus electrolyte over here and next is ultra filtration this is nothing but uh, separation of uh, that is a particular process uh, by which the colloidal particles are separated from the solvent and soluble solute present in here in the colloidal solution by using specially prepared filters those filters are permeable to all substances other than colloidal particles so here colloidal particles can pass through ordinary filter paper. Why? Because here the filter paper's pores are large enough to let the colloidal particles pass through them. But we can reduce the pores of the filter paper to a size 
by impregnating with colloidal solution to stop the flow of the particles. So, usual colloidal uh, colloid has 4 percent solution of nitrocellulose that is in a mixture of alcohol and ether. So, we make an ultra fil filter paper by soaking the filter paper in a colloidion solution. So, what is colloidion solution? It is a 4 percent solution of nitrocellulose in a mixture of alcohol and ether. So, the filter paper is soaked into it then hardening by formaldehyde and finally we dry it. So, by using this particular filter paper the colloidal particle can be separated from the rest of the material and this ultra filtration is also a slow process. So, how do we speed this up? So, we can speed up by pressure or suction applying pressure or suction. So, the colloidal particles left on the ultra filter paper we can stir with fresh dispersion medium or solvent to finally separate the pure colloidal solution. So, we learned about dialysis, electrodialysis and ultra filtration. So, you re read this repeatedly until you are clear with the concepts. Now, what are the properties of colloidal solutions? Mainly colligative properties. So, colloidal particles they are bigger aggregates. So, the number of particles is comparatively uh, smaller here when you compare it with true solution. But the values of colligative properties mainly osmotic pressure, lowering in vapor pressure, depression in freezing point and elevation in boiling point these are all of small order when you compare it with the values of the true solutions under the same concentration. Now, Tyndall effect this is very important so it's and as well as EC this is nothing but the scattering of light in a colloidal solution. So, what happens uh, in this case? So, what who discovered this first it was first observed by Faraday and uh, later it was studied in detail by Tyndall. So, after him we call it as Tyndall effect. So, why does this happen? Because colloidal particles have a special property of scattering light in all directions in space. So, what happens is that because of the scattering of light it illuminates the path of beam in the colloidal dispersion. So, here you can see the arrangement we are having the microscope and then the colloidal solution is taken here and we have uh, got a light source here and the Tyndall effect scattering of light over here when you pass it over colloidal solution the light rays are scattered and you can see the Tyndall cone here. So, uh, what happens is that uh, uh, there are two conditions which are to be satisfied only then you can observe the Tyndall effect. First one is that the diameter of the dispersed particle is not much smaller than the wavelength of the light used. So, um, what type of light we have to use? So, in this case the diameter of the dispersed particles is not smaller than the wavelength of the light used that is the first condition and second condition is that the refractive indices of dispersed phases and medium should greatly differ in magnitude. So, their magnitude differences should be large for Tyndall effect to take place. Now, the color of colloidal solution depends on wavelength of the scattered light by dispersed particles. So, wavelength of light depends on size and particles nature. Now, another important phenomena is Brownian movement. So, what happens is that if you view the colloidal solution under a powerful microscope, what you can see the colloidal particles appear to be in constant zigzag, they move all over the field of view. So, first this motion was obtained uh, observed by a British botanist called Robert Brown. So, we call it a Brownian movement. So, this move motion it is independent remember it is not dependent of the colloids nature, but what does it depend on the size of the particles not on the nature, but size of the particles and viscosity of the solution. So, smaller the size the viscosity will be less motion will be faster and Brownian movement has been explained to be why it is happening because of the unbalanced bombardment of the particles by molecules of the dispersion medium. So, when the molecules of the dispersed medium are bombarded by the particles the Brownian movement happens it has a stirring effect. Now, you can see here you know haphazard movement zigzag motion when you view it under a microscope you can clearly see it a random mo motion of the particles. Now, charge on colloidal particles always these colloidal particles you know they carry an electric charge. So, nature of this charge is same on all the particles in a given colloidal solution. So, it can be either positive or negative and the charge on the sole particles is due to a few reasons that is 
the electron capture by small particles during electron dispersion of metals due to preferential adsorption of ions from the solution or due to the formation of electrical double layer. So, the charge happens due to two factors one is the formation of electrical double layer and second preferential adsorption of ions in the solution. Then the preferential adsorption we consider that as the most accepted reason why because you know the sole particles can acquire positive or negative charge by the preferential adsorption of positive or negative ions. So, two or more ions when they are present in the dispersion medium what happens the preferential adsorption of the ion which is common to the colloidal particle is normally taking place. And now the two layers of opposite charges around the colloidal particles they combine that is known as Helmholtz electrical double layer. So, according to the modern views the first layer of ions will be firmly held and that first layer is called the the fixed layer because they are firmly held and second layer is mobile. So, we call it a diffuse layer and the separation of the charge uh, that is the main area or seat of potential. So, opposite signs uh, the charges of opposite signs on the fixed and diffuse parts of double layer causes a difference in potential between these layers. So, as a result of this potential difference between the fixed layer and the diff diffuse layer of opposite charges that is known as the electrokinetic potential or zeta potential. So, remember well what is meant by electrokinetic potential or zeta potential because of the separation of charges the opposite signs between the fixed and diffuse parts of the double layer as a result of it a potential is built up between the layers and this uh, difference in potential is known as electrokinetic potential or zeta potential. Now, another important uh, phenomena here is known as electrophoresis. So, electrophoresis what is it when you apply an electric potential across two platinum electrodes dipping in a colloidal solution. So, the colloidal particles which uh, they move towards one or the other electrode. So, here we have a stop cork and this is a reservoir anode and cathode. So, initial level here and the water dispersion medium this is a colloidal solution. So, the movement of the colloidal particles when you apply an electric potential is called electrophoresis. So, positively charged particles will move towards the cathode and negatively charged particles move towards the anode. So, when electrophoresis is prevented by suitable means we can see that the dispersion media will move towards the electric field. So, this phenomena is called electroosmosis. So, what is electroosmosis? When you try to prevent the uh, movement of particles by some suitable means the dispersion medium moves towards the electric field this phenomena is known as electroosmosis. Now, what is meant by coagulation or precipitation? So, coagulation is nothing the settling of colloidal particles or uh, precipitation of soil. So, coagulation can be uh, caused by many ways like electrophoresis, mixing of two opposite charged souls, boiling, persistent dialysis by addition of electrolytes. So, we can see that generally the greater the balance of flocculating ion added greater will be the power to cause precipitation. So, this is known as the Hardy Schulz rule. So, what is Hardy Schulz rule? The balance of the flocculation ion if it is greater then the power to cause the precipitation by this ion will be greater. So, in coagulation of negative salt the flocculating power is of the order aluminium Al3 plus Ba, barium 2 plus and sodium plus. Now, the coagulation of a positive soul, the flocculating power is of the order Fe, you remember this order FeCN6 uh, 4 greater than PO4 3 minus SO4 2 minus Cl minus maybe this is uh, usually asked for the exam. So, you just keep this order in your mind. And uh, the minimum concentration of an electrolyte always you have to remember you know you will get sums based on this part which I will upload it separately I will do these sums and show it to you so that you will find it easy. So, it has to be always in millimoles if they give it in moles you have to convert it into millimoles and by uh, uh, millimoles per liter only then the precipitation will be caused and in 2 hours that is a, a approximate time that is known as the coagulating value. The smaller the quantity needed higher will be the coagulating power of ion. So, next that is uh, all with the session and I will be uploading the 
last part of uh, surface chemistry shortly you know this unit is very important in both uh, questions uh, which are included for NEET as well as for 12th board exam. So, I would advise you to repeatedly revise it whenever you get time and also I will be uploading uh, simple methods or tricks based on uh, surface chemistry very shortly and also the MCQ. So, first we complete the theory part and once you finish it you straight away you try to attempt the MCQ so that you can know how well you have followed the concepts. So, once you are successful with that now next go to the simple tricks which I will upload it shortly and after that then you will be very much thorough with the concepts. So, uh, thanks for watching the video as always I say please do share with your friends subscribe and like my channel. So, thank you for watching. Bye.